Dr. Roger McIntyre joins me now, professor of psychiatry and pharmacology at the University of Toronto. He's leading this trial. Dr. McIntyre, this is a timely interview between you and I right now. Um, thank you so much for giving me your time. Let's first talk about the research that you're doing. Absolutely, Angie. Great to be with you again. And Dr. Tam captured it well. This is a very, very common problem. How common it is, we're still trying to really char characterize, not just across Canada, but around the world. But best estimates are that somewhere between 10 and 40 percent of people have this long-term complication from COVID. And you introduced the story accurately with respect to the fatigue, some of the problems with thinking, so-called brain fog are two of the so, uh, most common and very debilitating features. So what we're trying to do is really twofold. What we're trying to do is we're trying to better understand what is occurring, what's occurring in the brain in people who are experiencing this very debilitating, very complex syndrome post COVID. And along with that, what we're trying to figure out is to what degree is activated inflammation systems, mm -hmm. consequence of this uh, virus is this contributing to some of the symptoms people are having. Now, what we also want to do along with trying to really suss out what's going on in the brain is we want to help people. And we have a treatment that we're testing as a treatment that is affecting the immune system, but it's a treatment that can also benefit aspects of the brain fog mm -hmm. and the fatigue that are so ubiquitous in this condition. So it's a, it's a large trial. It's underway. Uh, here in Toronto, and we're uh, almost about a third of the way along. So we're, it's going very, very well with the recruitment. We hope to have results mm -hmm. that can translate to benefits for Canadians. Yeah, and there are so many Canadians, um, Dr. McIntyre, we've been speaking to them since the start of this pandemic when they've talked about these symptoms, not being able to get the support they need because everyone's going, well, I don't know what you're going through. So the research that you're doing is, is, is really critical in all of this. What about those individuals that have gotten COVID more than once? Because we know it's not one of those cases where, similar to chickenpox, for example, well, once you've had it, then the likelihood of you getting again is very, very, very low. You can still get COVID. I know people who've had it three months, you know, in between getting it the first time. So what about those patients? That's a great question. And it's part of a larger question we're trying to answer, and that is who is more likely to get this long COVID syndrome or long hauler syndrome? And we have, in fact, some signals that are beginning to emerge from the available medical literature on this. It does appear as though, at least for now, that women may be more at risk of this when compared to men. Mm -hmm. What we're also, in fact, hearing is that people who have a more severe, maybe multiple COVID infections, may be also at greater risk. One further point, uh, Angie, is that people who have so-called comorbidities, people mm -hmm. who have obesity or diabetes may be more at risk. But here's, in fact, a really important message, Angie. Look, the best treatment always is prevention. And we have a signal in our literature that's telling us if you get vaccinated and you have a breakthrough infection through the vaccination, the probability of you having long COVID may be less. The severity of long COVID may be less. That's emerging from the literature. So as we think about protecting ourselves, vaccine is clearly uh, an important tool for us, but the vaccine may also have some protective effects mm -hmm. against long COVID. Unfortunately, it's not perfect, and we still are seeing long COVID mm -hmm. in people who have been vaccinated. Before I let you go, Dr. McIntyre, and, and we'll, I would love to get you back on, because I think this is a conversation that we just need to keep having here, yeah, um, is uh, when you're talking about treatment, and I know that that's all in the early stages here, but yeah. the treatment and the recognition of these symptoms for those individuals who we know many of them still can't work, many of them maybe are working part-time, they've given up their careers, but that recognition so that they can get the health supports that they need, um, whether it is EI or, or, or whatnot or insurance or whatnot, but they know that they've got a path forward. Uh, absolutely, and that's so critical, Angie. Over the years, I've had the privilege of meeting so many people who are affected by different types of psychiatric problems. We don't think COVID-19 post-COVID is a psychiatric condition, but where I'm going with this is there's nothing in fact more um, discounting of someone's stress and debility when people just say, oh, this is all in your head, this is nothing, and you'll, you'll get over it. Right. This is clearly a very serious problem, um, and it's a very debilitating problem. There's many questions we're just trying to figure out with respect to who's at risk, what's causing it, how can we treat it, we're also, in fact, especially keeping a close eye on what are the long-term complications. In other words, people who have long COVID 
are they at greater risk later on of other problems mm -hmm. like, for example, depression or even so-called dementia? One factor I think is really, really important, and that is, is that this is history all over again. We've seen this in the past mm -hmm. where an infection, an, an epidemic, a pandemic has ignited really a nonspecific, poorly characterized medical problem mm -hmm. that initially is discounted. And then finally, we in the medical profession say, we got to understand it. And that's what we're doing right now. And people can uh, look up our, our study at bcdfoundation.ca and okay. uh, they can discuss it with our, with our team there. Uh, Dr. McIntyre, it's brilliant to have you on the program. As I said, I want to have you back on again as you're continuing the trials here. And we now navigate to this new aspect, I guess, of this pandemic and of this virus. Uh, Dr. Rob Mag uh, Roger McIntyre, thank you again for giving me your time today. I really, really do appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Thank you. You're very welcome.